welcome back to the Nitty Gritty. My name's Alicia. And I'm Ash. And Drive to Survive Season 5 came out a few weeks ago. And if you follow us on social media, you probably saw our watch party. It was a very fun time. We both have a lot to say about this new season. So let's just get right into it. Let's talk about episode one. So, okay, the first thing I noticed in episode one is, like, right when we start, they have a flashback of 2021 with the Mercedes Red Bull, like, championship fight, and it was actually, like, traumatizing for me to watch the Mercedes Ferrari fan. I generally don't think I can, like, keep watching that. Like, every time, like, I think every time I see that clip, I will forever be enraged and angry, so when it started with that, I'm like, why are you putting me in a bad mood after I just got here? So I feel that. But it also then becomes like this little vacation between our two favorite. Well, I don't know if my favorite, but Gunther and I like to call him Waldo because he looks like Waldo from Where's Waldo. And they're like drinking wine and living their best lives. And I think it's so funny how confident he was. He's like, oh, it looks like Ferrari has a very good car. And I'm like, Honestly, I wasn't paying attention to anything that came out of their mouth. I was just like, this is such a cute little trip. They're such besties. No, um, I want a spinoff show of just the two of them. Honestly, yeah. Them going parachuting or whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, Checo's saying they want drama. Like, the Netflix wants drama. He manifested that. There was so much Red Bull drama this year. And literally, also, Toto was like, this is not a documentary. It's more like Top Gun. And guys, if you watched the last episode, you know... I've paid to see Top Gun, like, five times in theater. I love Top Gun so much. But, like, he's also, like, kind of right. Um, also, Louisa being part of the plot. Is that how you say her name? I actually don't know. Um, That's how I see it on social media. Yeah. Lando being like, I have a girlfriend. Like, he had no idea what was to come. <laughs> like, that was... They should not have included that. They did him really dirty with that. Um, uh, George also said the car looked fast when he oh looked my God. at it. Yeah. Oh. He did not know it was coming. Um, also, Lewis said the Ferrari looks amazing and different. Real recognizing real. We love that. Um, also, Charles, this is our opportunity to become world champions. <sighs> it's not that the car wasn't good. Like, yeah, the car was good. It was the strategy. Sorry. It was the strategy that wasn't good. <laughs> I'm trying not to swear, guys. Um, also, it's funny. Max had to check out a fat ass at one point, and I cackled because I like, kicked like, he was like, I know this is his car, because he's a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, thinking. Like, I love to see it. Also, I hate the concept that if you're world champion, you can get the number one. I feel like that's so pretentious, and, like, I don't like it. We were literally Googling while we were watching the show, like, who else has actually done And, like, if you don't get the car. champion to the next year, you have to go back to your old number. That's so embarrassing. Yeah. Also, um, oh my god, when Guther said, I'm gonna swear, guys, no more f- Russians until I leave this planet when he got rid of Nikita like Jesus Christ I was not expecting that but I guess with like the whole like the press was at him and he was like yeah I'm also like surprised that they were allowed to include the stuff about the war considering the FIA's like issue with like political statements like they're not allowing that this year that's why I didn't expect any of that in the first episode then I was like damn I didn't know you're allowed to talk about this let alone like show Gunther saying that exactly. line specifically and keeping that in the show that was kind of crazy um also since we're talking about Haas that scene with Kevin yeah. when he's driving his car is so there are a lot of interesting cinematic choices and editing and there was a jump cut but we'll talk about it later um that we saw with Max not Max Christian but essentially Kevin was like driving his car and there was like a leak and then through the headphones you can hear like the echo being like Kevin can you hear me Kevin can you hear me then it's like a cut to like where was it Germany Denmark. Denmark, yeah. And him playing with his daughter in the water. I'm like, this is, like, so weird. And, like, I get that you want to include their families, but, like, this is such a weird place to put it. Like, he's in the car. Cut to what he's thinking about his daughter in the car. Like, this is so dramatic. They also don't use something like that, like, much later on in the show, which I just thought was interesting. I also can't imagine being Kevin and getting called up so last minute and being like, oh, you're driving for us. Like, you haven't been training to be a driver the entire year. But then he still performs pretty well for someone who literally hasn't been in a Formula One car. Yeah, it was actually impressive, the qualifying he had. The episode um, literally ends with Red Bull drama and then cuts to Yuki farting in the car with Pierre. And I'm like, what a, what a great way to end <laughs> off the episode and go on into episode two. Episode two is called Bounce Back. And I think they're talking about Mercedes porpoising issue with that title. Lewis literally said, I'm trying to take back the championship that was taken from me. And I was like, speak your truth, Lewis. The way the first episode started with the flashback and then he says this. I'm like, yes, sir. Um, Will Buxton being like, it looks like they're listening to ACDC when they're porpoising. Like, that's so true. They're like, (laughs) they're bouncing. They're bouncing. Um, The team principals meeting in Montreal. This. This is like peach drama. This is like probably the best scene shown in Drive to Survive because of this drama. This is what I'm here for, and also the memeable content. 
Like, oh my gosh, so many memes. But it's starting off with Christian being like, maybe we should take the cameras off. I don't want it for the cameras. Toto's like, I do not care. Like, leave the cameras on. Let me speak my truth. <laughs> and then it's interesting to see all the clicks that were made throughout the season. Like, in this episode, when Toto's literally, like, calling everyone out, it's Waldo, it's Gunther, and it's Christian, you know, telling him if he has a problem, he can go and fix his car. <laughs> and I was like, damn, the He's girls like, are fighting. I printed out. I printed out. I was like, he has the receipts. That was my favorite meme. Him being like, it's right here. And but then later in the season, when, you know, everything with the cost cap happens, we see the click change. And then it's Toto, Waldo and Zach. And we're like, damn, the girlies. Just about what fits their narrative. Squad humping. Um, humping. <laughs> squad jumping. She was crying. Mike Crack. I don't think he was taking notes. He was definitely like, doodling or something. Or like someone said he was doing his crossword. <laughs> that man is so unserious. It's actually hilarious. You can kind of see him smirking every now and then as he was like writing. And I'm like, he's like, he's just trying to like get his points and leave, you know? Honestly, Yas Capital was like kind of enjoying the drama and he was like giggling about it. I miss that man. He's so funny. He's so good. Um, um, also at Silverstone, Lewis got everyone matching Union Jack Speedos. That is so random. I would never expect that from him. Speaking of Silverstone, every so Ash and I were watching this together, and every single time the Silverstone clip of, well, you all know, um, came up on the screen, Ash was literally gonna like vomit every single time. Oh my gosh, Ash was on I don't know. Tears. It was actually terrifying. I actually almost threw up. I was like, crying. Because the more perspectives you also see from it, the scarier it gets. And like, I, like I kid you not, every single episode always had the Silverstone crash to do with it. And every single time, Ash was like. <laughs> it's just it's also like the perspective they show like from inside the car and the camera like going black i was like why are you doing this to that me? was the scariest like, when you see the camera go black <sighs> anyways joe you sweet man his point of view in his interview made me cry yeah. are we surprised i literally cried so many times when it came to silverstone and i can't, I can't imagine he's so strong for that like that's so terrifying on to episode three it's called matter of principle um TBH, all I really remember from this episode is when they were, like, doing the tire change in the pit, and then Paris Hilton was like, that's so hot. And I was like, girly, I relate. I agree. At the start of the episode, with Charles and Carlos shooting that, like, commercial, like, we wish that was us shooting that commercial for them, and they did not know how to act. The way they were delivering their lines was so funny. It was so funny, too, because Charles was in the car honking the horn, and then someone had to yell, quiet on set, we're filming. And I'm like, honestly mood though shut up. <laughs> like shut up we're filming please also there were so many celebrities at the miami grand prix sean mendes it's weird that sean mendes was there and is never at the montreal grand prix like that's what i'm like why are you aren't here? you canadian aren't you gonna hang out with me and lance like, exactly okay will ferrari ever not fumble monaco like oh god it's just interesting to like see it again and be like the thing is the mistakes they're making are mistakes they've made before it's not yeah. like they're learning from anything so like watching this and being like ah they're going to copy and paste do the same stuff later. and Yeah. And listening to everyone talk about, like, everyone else in the pot paddock talk about Matea, it's like they knew he was going to get fired. Like, maybe it's because I shot it afterwards, but I was like, you guys know something we don't. It's funny because, like, I, there are so many clips of him being like, him being like, no, I'm confident. Like, no, the car is good. I'm like, Shadi, it's not the car that's the problem. It's the strategy. Um, also, the blue shirt that Lando was wearing in this episode gets passed around, like, so much. I don't know if all of them just own that shirt because of Puma, or if it just, like, like, that shirt gets passed around more than the second Red Bull seat. I'm just saying. Like, <gasps> I actually, like, <laughs> you did not say that. Jesus Christ. We'll get into that into the episode later with you. Um, but... Yeah. I'm not going to talk about Silverstone. I think Carlos deserved an F1 win. I just think the way it happened was Ferrari's fault and they caused attention. I don't know. It just wasn't ideal because Carlos couldn't even celebrate his win. Yeah. Um. Episode four? This next episode, I have a lot of issues with it just because I don't like the name. <laughs> Yeah, like father, like son, question mark. I just don't like any of the, like, I don't like the perspective they're trying to tell the story from. Also, I'm going to be honest, the entire episode was just literally a compilation of Mick crashes that I could easily find on YouTube myself. Um, yeah. And it, it just, it hurt. I, I, it made me sad. Honestly, okay. First of all, the way the episode starts, the old footage literally wanted to cry. And... Max, like, kind of standing up for Mick was kind of sweet, especially because they grew up together. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can we just comment on the fact that baby Max was so cute? Oh, my gosh. That little child. I just want to... I always see the interview where he's introducing himself, and he's like, Max, Max Verstappen. Verstappen. <laughs> and his little sandals, and I'm like, yeah, Max. Um, 
one thing I do like like about Haas is that everyone always like shits on Gunter for being like so involved in PR, but like he's just willing to do what they need to do what to get his money. Done, like yeah. he just wants his bag. That's the thing. My favorite thing is every time, like every two minutes, he's like, "I have to call Jean," and I'm like, "I have to tell Jean." I'm like, whenever I'm trying to leave a room now, I'm gonna be like, "Sorry, I have to call Jean." <laughs> I'm just gonna walk out and leave. Like Jean is always there, and like I remember in the episode they did say like, you know, Mick makes. When he crashes, he doesn't make small crashes. He makes big crashes. And for a small team like Haas, spending half a million dollars every time Mick crashes. Yeah. Like, I do understand exactly, like, how much money they had to spend on Mick's crashes. And I understand their point of view. But at one point, Gunter literally admitted that the other car was faster. And yet he was upset that Mick wasn't performing as well as Kevin. Not I'm even so glad one time, multiple times that episode, he's like, oh, he just wants the faster car. And I'm like... <sighs> and... I'm glad Kevin stood up for him as his teammate. Like, you know, at least someone is on his side. Because yeah. it feels like everyone at Haas was against Mick. Like, he did not have any supporters there. So, I-, I don't know if you remember the scene. It was literally, they were in line getting, like, breakfast. When they were, like, in quotation marks, you can just get rid of him if you want to. They said, I don't know if you remember that. I'm like, the way you're, like, casually talking about, like, letting go of Mick in line to get breakfast. as Like, casually as something like an old piece of clothing you can just throw out if you wish to. Also... Like, the reporter that what I did like is like they did include some parts to like make Haas look bad and the reporter from Sky Germany being like, Points are important, but you need the team's support to get them and I was like, That is so tea that you said that and Gunther was like, That was a, a mess. Nasty, yeah, he's like, That's a nasty interview and I was like mm. You're just mad he spoke the truth. Yeah. Um, because it does take team support sometimes and morale to Exactly. Yeah. Also the fact that Kevin recommended Nico Mm. as, like, a replacement is crazy. Like, I didn't, would not have expected that considering their history. I was gonna say, if you can cut this out, suck my balls. <laughs> um, episode five is called Pardon My French. I did not know if Fernando speaks French. Ash and I spent, Ash and I spent a good while trying to figure out if this man was actually speaking French or if we were just imagining it. Because I'm like, is he responding in French? Where is this man? I thought we meant, like, what? So the thing is, like, he was responding in French, but I noticed that, like, he didn't know what he was saying for sure. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he speaks it fluently. Okay. I'm not 100% sure because, like, I remember at one point he was, like, asking Esteban, like, yeah. oh, like this? Like, is this how you say it? So I, I think like, he, like, has to, like, to a certain extent because Alpine's a French team, but, like... I was shook. I was like, what the heck is happening? Also, Oscar being in an episode with a confessional as a reserve driver is actually wild, but I guess anything for the drama, right? Anything for the drama. I, okay, overall, I personally think Otmar is great, and I feel like we're so I, bad for him. Literally, watching this episode made me feel so bad for Otmar, and I am Team Otmar, like, till I die. Team Otmar, 100%, because let's quickly talk about Oscar, because, like, they invested $4 million into Oscar, and he was even at their events in their uniform, mm-hmm. promoting and speaking for the team. And then, like... Uh, I don't know. There's another episode where they talk about his, like, um, like seat issue in more depth. Yeah. But... I don't know. Even Christian says that he regrets not getting Oscar because he thinks he can be the next Max. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. But, like, overall, gosh, my sympathies to Otmar. Like, I feel... <laughs> So yeah. Also, okay, other things in this that I noticed that are so unrelated to Alpine is that the drivers get escorted through traffic so they don't have to wait. What the heck? I literally would never would have guessed that. Imagine, like, being on the 401 and being like, gosh, the traffic is so bad today. And then you look over and it's literally, like, Max Verstappen <laughs> in the car next to you just going down. Um. Also, Danny and Linda being late for the briefing, so on brand. So on brand. Uh, Checo's reaction to Seb's retirement this was, was so me. This is the people's, re- that was the people's reaction right he there. He was like, Seb has Instagram? <laughs> and then right when he's like, my retirement, he was like, what? And I was like, ugh. I feel that. See, Seb single-handedly put Silly Season into effect. And honestly, I thought in Silly Season, Liam Lawson would get a mm. seat at Alpha Tori. But I guess that all hopes of that, like, whatever, after Monza, because Nick. Yeah. Um, But McLaren being like, we weren't a part of Silly Season. As if they hadn't already signed Oscar after Silverstone at that point. It's, like, how are you just going to lie through your teeth like that? It's so funny, because it's the way that we all knew they were also talking to Oscar. So it's kind of just like, why are you... I, I I like the editors for keeping the beef and by putting it in there to keep to keep the drama, to keep it there. Um, I was gonna say Nando moving to Aston was so random, but now that I've like watched the first race, I kind of think he knew what he was getting into and like. Yeah. Also, Alpine passed McLaren in the points this episode, and McLaren was like, "You pass me the points, Mister Steal Your Driver. I'm gonna steal your driver. You pass me the points, I'm stealing your driver." <laughs> and they did. 
And they did. Uh, next episode is Nice Guys Finish Last. Another title I also hate because it, it breaks my soul. It is about Danny. Um, also, okay, so Jerry and Christian were gossiping about Os- Oscar's situation, and that was actually so funny. Mm. And Horner said Oscar wouldn't, like, sign a contract unless, like, so- say yeah. no about Alpine if he hadn't already signed a contract. And I was like, that's so facts. That's the only time Christian Horner's ever spoken facts. Also, fun fact, um, there's a jump cut in this actual scene that Ash and I went back multiple times to look at. It just has media production students. What the heck, Netflix? How do you have a jump cut in one of your shows? It was so- actually, it was, and it's like, they're zooming in. And the, or they're zoomed out, and then it zooms in, and but it's like a cut on Christian Horner's face. So go ahead and come to the scene and take a look at the jump cut for funsies. Um, Please proceed. <laughs> all I have to say is that Zach Brown is the ultimate villain. Yeah. Um, Danny found out about his seat like being given away and him not having it next year during summer break. They'd already signed Oscar, and they didn't tell Daniel that he didn't have a seat next year. So Danny thought he was defending his seat in France. But they had signed Oscar after Silverstone and didn't tell Danny, as you said, until the summer. And it's like, it's like, respect, maybe. Just some respect, maybe some care. (sighs) This whole episode was also just me being annoyed with Lando. And like the things he was saying. Yeah, Lando being like, um, he was asked, are you ready to lead the team next year? And he's like, I already am. Like, like, so you're, you say you agree, (sighs) you're favored on this team. And I don't really, like, dislike Lando, but some of the stuff he says, I just can't believe he says it. Yeah. Like. It's like, how, why are you so full of yourself? I'm sorry. When like, this happened, I thought that the whole sympathy, like, I don't have sympathy for Danny was, like, spun in the media. But seeing what he actually said was, he was like, oh, if he doesn't perform and not, doesn't get results, so he doesn't have a seat, he won't have a seat. Have you ever won for McLaren Lando? I'm like, um, have you? Have you been like performing like you get the results that they want as well? Like, not necessarily. Neither of you get results, and that's not your fault. The car just sucks, and we see that this year too. I don't know. It was just hurtful and like a little disrespectful to see. Like, I understand it's a sport, and yeah, you do have to perform, but maybe like he's your teammate. Also, um, they talked about Oscar and Alpine this episode as well. Mm. And, like, kind of going back to it, like, where's the loyalty? Like, they put so much money into you and you just, like, where go where you think the better opportunity is. And I get doing whatever you think is best for your career, but this is, like, they've been building a career for you. The reason you have a career is because of them. They invested in you. And you're just going to leave them because it's better it's better for you. When it's really not, the McLaren's not good this year. He literally had to retire his first race. Yeah. And... I don't know how Alpine got painted as a bad guy in this situation. That's the thing. Like, Ash and I were absolutely shocked to just see it from, like, Omar's perspective and be like, damn. Like, but I I really need to, like, look in more into, like, because I can't understand how you can invest 400 million, like, what was it? Four Four million. million. Sorry, not 400 million. I'm struggling today, y'all. Four million dollars. I don't know how you can invest four million dollars into someone and have them, like, he wore their uniform. He came to their events. And the way you can't sign for that team, like, I need to understand what like what made them lose that case and like what the legality issues was and not also not zach trying to like protect himself by being like how about i give you danny instead the driver swap and suggestion I was, like, I was like and also sure. how are you gonna recommend that considering the fact that like he was at renault and yeah. that's literally renault like that's not gonna renault work new colors. Renault new like year. i don't know danny did cereal dirty Zach did Danny dirty. Bad decisions were made, and Alpine, Alpine wouldn't take him back again, because it it comes down to loyalty. Like you weren't loyal to them, how can they expect you to be loyal again? Like Pierre was loyal to Red Bull even after they did him dirty. Yeah. So I see why Alpine went with Pierre. Pierre, yeah. There's also I don't remember who this man was, but that guy that went to Danny and told him, "Oh my God, you shouldn't trust." I told you not to trust Zach. Yeah. Was like. I don't know who it was, but that was crazy. And Danny was speaking to him in, like, what, Italian yeah, like, or something? Or, like, so Portuguese sexy, or Spanish? Sorry. I was like, I didn't know Danny could speak another language. It was so good. Um, but, like, overall, the episode just filled from, like, lack of respect from every party, whether that be, like, Oscar or Zach or, like, whatever. It was just, it was sad to watch. This episode ended with F-E-A. I can't say it, but I'll F-E-A. I'll and then you can, you can cut it, you can honk it out. Ready? <laughs> F-E-A. 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 Come on. F them all. F them all. <laughs> uh, episode seven is called Hot Seat. The first thing I have to say is, I want Horner's daddy mug with the Union Jacks. <laughs> that is actually so iconic. I want it. <laughs> um, This was like an episode entirely about Checo, which like, 
I get because of his Monaco stuff, but he's like the second driver at Red Bull and everyone knows that. So it's weird that he had his own episode. There are like teams, like for example, Williams, who didn't even get like any coverage on them. We had scraps. And I'm like, damn, but... Um, also, the segment about Checo and his wife was so random. Like, they don't publicize other drivers' relationships unless the driver can benefit from that PR. Like, the good PR is to portray them as a family man and, yeah. like, have a happy family. And I think the reason they did that was because there was some tea about his relationship with his wife in Monaco because, like, I'm not going to get into it, but, like, apparently he cheated on her and there's some video evidence. But I feel like that's why they did that because he needs that good PR. Like, Checo does this, Gunther does this, Christian does this, but Sebastian doesn't because he's he private with his family and he doesn't need that and he doesn't need that PR <laughs> it's so interesting because like the whole idea of like them bringing back like the whole thing is like Red Bull wasn't going to come back onto the show for everything that they like yeah the portrayals of Max but then we see them coming in and I feel like and we'll talk about this more towards the end but feel like it's more of like a Red Bull agenda that's being pushed and yeah that's why there's this whole episode of like PR for Checo and it's kind of just like it just felt really oddly placed a lot of the things in this season felt very oddly placed and why is this here but just going back into Checo it's like why is Checo being treated like he's only here to support Max like the whole thing is is that he's being told to prove himself but then he's also only given the opportunity to support Max but so it's like he literally said the team is happy with me and I'm happy with the team and he's implying that he doesn't care about becoming a champion like he's okay with being a second driver and you know what if that's what you want in life that's good for you I but mean, you're making the day Red but- Bull kind of implied in this episode that Checo's replaceable yeah. and that's honestly the pressure that comes to the second Red Bull seat yeah like, people say that Red Bull would replace Checo with Daniel Ricciardo now that he's his reserve. And honestly, it kind of would be a, a smarter de- decision financially because Daniel would give them good PR and he could just drive for them and they could just be paying less money. Um, but I guess Checo's good performance in Monaco kind of, con- like... That's what I'm saying. They're acting like Checo isn't performing, but he is. He's perform- I feel like he's performing to the extent he can when he's only given the opportunity su- to support, like, Max. Like, I feel like, you know, Checo's... I feel like Checo's performance is great. And I'm like, who on the grid, who else on the grid are you really trying to replace him with at this very moment? That's exactly true. I don't know who they would, like, who they think is better than him to be replacing him in with. In this episode, Christian said Yuki's also on the market. And I was like, is he <laughs> Is he? <laughs> is he on the market? Um, <laughs> also, the fact that Checo won that race, like, Rain in Monaco is, like, the hardest F1 setting on an F1 game. I'm pretty sure they said that they in the episode. That, yeah. And that is so true. That's exactly how it is. Like, it's so difficult because Monaco's already so hard to drive. In the rain... Um, I That's honestly a big W. That I should on- be two wins. Sorry, I honestly think that them showing Checo's career win in Monaco, like it's so good for his career. Right after they showed Daniel Ricciardo's career in Monaco, after he read, like he left Red Bull right after, like that Monaco situation, and them showing showing Checo in Monaco this year, like I feel like they're showing that Checo's just recreating Daniel's mistake. Mm. Like he's just gonna get treated treated as poorly as Daniel was. Because he's still performing well like Daniel did in Monaco when, like, Daniel literally couldn't shift gears in Monaco and still won. And uh, Checo did the same thing in the rain. He won, Mm. but he's still replaceable, Mm. even if he's performing well, which is so unfortunate. Damn. Episode 8. Anything with Pierre and Yuki, I will consume. I will eat. I will (laughs) consume all that content. The fact that it's called Alpha Male is so random. But we're not gonna say it, but you know what we're thinking. I know what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is just Yuki and Pierre's divorce, though. Ch- like, children of divorce. We said it last episode, but children of divorce. I am a child of divorce. It literally was like, first of all, Pierre was like, I've never met anyone like Yuki before. Like, are you married? Like, I'm confused. And Yuki said <laughs> that what they were, what they had is like definitely special. I guess you could just look at it as them being like brothers but like they always do this in the media where they're like oh like the divorce the divorce like they're married so it's kind of funny but it's literally giving like his best friend or boyfriend got accepted to a like a university after high school and they're separating yeah. and they're like you're not gonna be my partner next year i'm so sad and nervous about what this means for our relationship like one's at community college and the other's at like harvard and they're like what are we gonna do and that's what it was giving because i was eating up the what's their ship name you carry you yeah, care like, you care picky Pick Yuki. <laughs> you care? Is Yuki. that how you pronounce it? I have no clue. Some offhand, like, random comments is, I could definitely wear Yuki as a backpack. <laughs> that man is so tiny. Like, he's so small. And also, Alpha Tori is so H&M. Oh. It, it, like, that, that, that team gives so H&M. It does give H&M. Oh, my God, it does give H&M. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my God. Alpine and H&M collab coming soon? 
Check your H and M. <laughs> um, Yuki is saying that he doesn't know why Pierre would leave Alpha Tori and trying to make Red Bull like look as like a good team. That just like like confirms my suspicion that like Red Bull did some has some sort of contract with box to box films to like make them look good mm-hmm. or like with Netflix or something. Um, they talked about Suzuka this race. <sighs> I feel like the media wasn't as serious about how bad the conditions were. Like, being behind the wheel looked so scary, the camera angles and everything, and Carlos's accident was even more scary from yeah. that angle. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they didn't mention the tractor situation at all. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like there's so much drama that relates to Red Bull that we were not given. And I think the reason for that lies because they had to sacrifice some of that to get Max onto the show. Also, um, they made it seem like... Like, Max won the championship, and there was, like, no, like, red flags and stuff. I feel like they left out so much stuff out of Suzuka that made it the race that it was, which I get in terms of, like, in terms of, like, timing, but, like, what happened is important, right? But also the whole point of Suzuka is that they don't even know if he, like, the whole thing was is that they wasn't sure if he actually won or not based on the point systems and the conditions and how, like, essentially just how the entire race operated. And they're like, oh, we're just, like, not going to show the fact that Max himself was not sure whether or not he had won the race. And it's kind of just, like... Okay. Um, we did end up seeing the Nick's perspective of Monza because it was like about Alpha Tori. We got some William scraps there. Uh, barely said. Mostly. Um, pieces. Something like, does anyone know Yuki's origin story? Like, does anyone know how Yuki got where he is? Like, I need to know more about this man. I feel like I know nothing about Yuki other than the fact that he actually doesn't want to be a Formula One driver and doesn't want to be in Formula One. It's like a hobby, and he just wants to open a restaurant. Formula One is literally just like a side quest for Yuki, and I like I think that's like such king behavior for him though like the fact that formula one is your side quest but also like how did you get all the way here and like not even want to be here is the question but like side quest energy get it um okay so the next episode let's just get right into it <laughs> it's called over the limit cost cap obviously that's why it's called that <laughs> The way, let's just talk about, let's just go into it. The way Christian... Christian Horner is, like, Max's elderly mother that does anything to please him. It's giving, like, my son lives in my basement, but I'm scared of him at the same time, so I can't kick him out. Um, I was surprised they brought up the cost cap in this episode, considering it was all about Red Bull, but him just being like, it was an accounting error, like, okay. It if was I, a little too much on catering, my bad. Like, we filled out a bubble wrong. If I have an accounting error as a citizen of Canada, the CRA is going to, like, try to arrest me. Like, you can't just have an accounting error in your job. Like, that's literally your job, is to have everything in line. Yeah. And I'm like, how can you not... Um, we go back, as we mentioned, the little high school girl clicks before. We see, we see Zach, who's very passionate as, you know, the CEO of a team who can't even reach the cost cap. Same thing if we look at Gunther. Dems ain't got the money to even worry about what the cost cap is. And it's like, that's why Zach is so passionate about, like, making sure teams, you know, writing his whole email and his letter because, you know, he's the CEO of a team that doesn't have this money, and he wants to make sure all the other teams are. This is the, like, only W that Zach Brown has ever taken in his life. The one time he's actually spoken facts. And honestly, like, I think McLaren has to take so many sponsorships, and that's why the car looks like that, because they can't meet, reach a cost cap. Yeah. But, you know, the cost cap made me think that, do you think before the cost cap, because it wasn't introduced to, like, what, like, 2021, I think? Yeah. Do you think they like Toto just put in a lot of money into Mercedes because he's like a billionaire and just profited off of it. And now that there's a cost cap, he can't do that. And that's why the Mercedes sucks so bad. Like, I don't know if this is a common knowledge and I'm just really late to the party, but I came to this realization and it kind of like made me think. Because I remember we were literally talking about this as we we're watching, but like everyone else was able to fix their porpoising very early on in the season. But as you can see, Mercedes has not been able to do that. And is it because they've always been able to throw money at a problem and have it fixed, but now that they don't have that flexibility, mm-hmm. they actually have to deal with the real issues. For example, the poor percent of the car and the car not being able to be fixed for the season because they don't have all the money to spare to throw at it. And I don't know. Also, oh, Christian Horner guessed every single person <laughs> he who was like going to call him out on his... Like, the trio, the clicks. Exactly. Toto, Matea, and Zach. He knew who would call him out on like his... <laughs> Oh my gosh, the fact that he went to Mateo, he picked, I think it was like the pit, where they were all, they were working on the cars, it was was super loud, and he goes to confront him there. In front of the loud car, been working on it, so so that they couldn't capture the audio. But they still did. That, first of all, can I just say, like, Christian is such a girly, and like, so spice girl, for confronting Mateo (laughs) like that. 
well, he's picking things up from his love life, but, like, it's the way he went up to him being like, so I heard you were talking smack, and he's like, I didn't bring, I didn't mention your team, and he's like, then whose team did you mention? And he was like, no, no, no. And Mateo was like, well, if you're coming up to me like this, like, you seem guilty. And I was like, honestly, Mateo, speak your truth. You're so right for that. I don't always agree with things that Mateo says, but that, I like, I love, like, the fact that sometimes it's just mimicking high school girl click drama. Like, that was so, that was so good. Also, them trying to make the narrative about, like, everyone, like, trying to, to, like, distract from the cross cap and, like, the fact that everyone's calling Max's championship in illegitimate they're trying to like ma- have that narrative that like oh like all oh, this is affecting max's mental mm. health and like it's not good for him like you guys just like can't be happy for anyone and i'm like that's not the issue here no one's upset that max won and no one was upset that max won last year either the issue isn't not last year the year before yeah. oh my gosh Oopsie. um it's the issue is how he wins and that's not his fault yeah like it just doesn't seem right and that's on the fia not on max so i don't know why they were trying to spin that Everyone knows how it's the FIA. No one likes the FIA. Okay, last episode. Oh, gosh. Well, let's start off with saying Lewis said that if he ever gets the opportunity to be in a Top Gun movie again, he will get a substitute driver and he will leave and be in the film. And I can't wait for that day. As he should. The, Honestly, that's when I pay 10 times to go watch Top Gun in the theater. With the way that Mercedes has been performing lately and how late Lewis is in his career, like, I think he should just take that risk. Who cares? Like, you can drive in Formula One wherever you want. Top Gun is forever. Top Gun is forever. Um, th- honestly, I have nothing to say about this episode. I feel like it was so useless and there was really not much said. One thing I do have to say is McLaren's catering seemed great. Like, I want to eat that. Like, maybe we shouldn't hate on them as much as we do so we can get invited and, like, go to their paddock and eat that. Maybe, maybe Red Bull was jealous about McLaren's catering and that's why they went over the cost gap. I'm okay, catering. they were trying to compete with McLaren's catering. They were like, bet back. I'll show you. Um... For Seb's retirement, they didn't really have anything in yeah. there. Yeah. It could be that Seb didn't want it, and we know that he usually doesn't like. But they had this whole flashback to young Daniel and, like, the little recap as, of his career. And honestly, it did kind of make me cry a little. Yeah, I was but very sad. how did they do that for Danny and not for Seb when Danny isn't even, like, retiring? Like, yeah. he's. I didn't understand that. I would like to think it's because Seb didn't want anything, but then at the same time, like, that's Sebastian Vettel, everybody. Exactly. It's Sebastian Vettel. And, like, the whole thing with, at the end where Daniel's like, the show isn't going to be the same without me, I'm like, speak your truth, because you're right. The show isn't going to be the same without He's me. been on, like, literally every season, ever. Like, why do you think Red Bull's milking the heck out of his PR? Exactly. Because everyone wants to see him. Um, also, like, just in general, it was so Red Bull-focused. Like, they mentioned Brazil barely in the last episode. They just talked about how it was Mercedes' first win this season, they didn't really even focus on how it was George's win in general, yeah. like first win in Formula One. Um, and they didn't mention any of the drama at Brazil that happened with Checo and Max because it's all about the Red Bull agenda. Yeah. And they also didn't talk about Williams at all during the season. And like Latifi left, which doesn't seem that important considering the fact that not a lot of people like Latifi. But like, that's still something that's happening in the sport that you should probably be reporting on, right? Because like you want to keep track of what drivers are leaving and what spots are open and who's exactly. Coming in. Like and I feel like there was like this episode kind of felt like a waste. Like there was nothing to gain from besides Charles yelling in the last and lap saying, stop talking to me. I know what to do, so just leave me alone. And I was like, he had his Kimmy moment. Emo came. Looking at Drive to Survive as like a media student perspective, like even if these people watching it, not everyone is going to be like a Formula One fan, right? So shouldn't you be including this information that mo- like regular viewers may not have access to or are not interested in? Like if you really want to make it a good documentary or docuseries, and I would arguably say it's not a good docu series for this reason and for the way they like falsify information. You should be including information that you may not see as important as a Formula One fan, but it could be important to viewers who are not Formula One fans. Like I don't understand why they're not doing that. Yeah, that's just my media student perspective. Um, but Zach being like, I'm forever grateful for what Daniel did for us. Because um, you have a tattoo. You on your literally body. have to be grateful. It's on your body forever. Um. Matea denying the rumor that he's leaving and being, like, he's, like, really relaxed about it. Like, I'm not leaving. He did not see that coming at all. He left. He was gone. Also, them asking about Charles, how his year went, and then putting that clip of him screaming in France. I, I couldn't. I, and they, they said Charles Charles was saying that they made too many mistakes and stuff like that. But I can't believe they put that clip right after it. That was actually crazy of them. Yeah. Um, that's kind of really it for this episode. Oh, 
Kevin saying Nico can suck his balls and Nico acknowledging it, like, they know what's going on in the situation, and I'm glad they're kind of, like, joking about it. I'm excited to see the two of them this season. I was going to say next season, but it's this season. But, like, yeah, overall, from, like, once again, the perspective of a media student, this was just, like, not a good season it- in every aspect, and there's clearly much an agenda going on, I feel like, more than any other season, and we look forward to uncovering more about what the heck is going on. So for our hot takes this week. The hot take is, is that, as we already said, the season of Drive to Survive is very bad, and Netflix, you should actually bring Ash and I onto the team to maybe help give the people what they want. That's the hot take. Uh, My hot take, and it's not really a hot take because I think it's factual, is that Red Bull definitely made a deal with Netflix or Box to Box Films to make them favor them in this show. Like, there is just, this season has so much Red Bull and it's all about how good they are and nothing, like, like dramatic about them at all that they've been doing the past few seasons. Yeah. So, I just... Oh. I kind of feel like it's a hot fact, to be honest. The fact that they can be bought like that as a media company is kind of unfortunate and disappointing, but it's fine. Um, but that's all for now. As for next week's episode, Saudi baby, <laughs> we'll be in Saudi. So next episode's about Saudi, and um, I actually have to go now because I have to call Jean. <laughs> but you guys have a really great week. Um, Ash, you want to wrap up? Uh, thank you yeah. so much for listening or watching, or however you choose to stream this. We will see you next week when we get into the nitty gritty.